What's up guys and gals? So I want to make a video on how to get copepods to grow in your tank. So for whatever reason they flourish in this tank. So I want to explain to you some things I do that I think helps them grow so well. Uh, first off, some reasons why you might want copepods, uh, even if you don't have a mandarin or things like that. Um, first off, especially when you're first starting out a tank and you're going through the cycling phase, they are great for eating that film algae and that detritus off rocks and off your glass. I noticed whenever I started uh, dosing copepods to my tank, my algae went way down. So at night, I'll see them come out and they'll be all over my glass, um, just eating all that film algae up. Same with my rocks. Another reason is when you first get corals, um, it's something for them to eat. Cer certain types of corals will eat them. Um, anemones, uh, your different inverts might feed on them, and especially some of your fish, like my six line wrasse is always picking the bigger ones off. So those are some reasons why you might want some. I just think they're overall better for um, your tank. It'll help you, it'll help uh, build up a healthy tank having copepods in there. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna seed your tank with copepods. So copepods do make their way in naturally, whether it's on your corals, come in with your fish, um, live rock, whatever. Somehow they will eventually get in. Um, but for me, uh, I'll go ahead and add them in, especially when I first start out on tank, or if you have a tank already established, maybe you want to get a mandarin or something, go ahead and dose some in. So at my local fish store, they had some bottles that had different types of copepods. I want to say it had five or six different types of copepods in there. And that's the one I would go for. I know Algae Barn and places like this, they have great copepods, so they're highly recommended. I've never used them, but I've had, I've heard on online, a lot of people recommend them in the forums. They've had great experience. I have bought a Chato from them before, and that was a great experience. Um, they do sell different types of copepods, so you can get certain kinds. But I would suggest getting the variety pack, whatever they have, whether it's three or four different kinds of copepods. I just find uh, getting a variety, maybe certain types of copepods will do better in your tank. Um, and maybe some of the other ones don't do so well. So it's good to get a variety. Um, so after you go ahead and dose the copepods in your tank, um, the next thing I would do is start dosing. Actually, you might want to start dosing this before, but during is phytoplankton. So dosing a cap of this every day, every other day, will help uh, your copepods grow. You can't really overdose the phytoplankton. Um, you'll just get a, you'll just get more copepods. In my experience, when I dose heavier amounts of phytoplankton, um, they just explode in growth. So that's a big key to getting copepods to live longer in your tank, get abundance of them, is feed phytoplankton. So just like anything else, if there's no food to eat, population will die down. A lot of people add copepods to their tank. They never think about feeding the copepods. They think they'll just eat the algae and all that. They will eat the algae, but the phytoplankton will really help them flourish and reproduce. So that is a big part of why I think I have a ton of copepods in this tank. Right now it's during the day, they're hidden. So I can't show you those, but I can show you some of the ones that are in my refugium, which leads me to my next thing, having a refugium. Uh, once I put a refugium in this tank, along with dosing the phytoplankton, I mean, it exploded in growth. I had copepods everywhere. At night, um, my glass will be filled with them. I'll see them on my rock work, see them on some of my corals. Um, there's a ton of them in my refugium. Um, so I would suggest getting a refugium. They stay in there. I think that's where they breed. Um, I do have a lot of my rock worth, but the majority of them are in my refugium and, um, those eggs or whatever, or maybe some of them will get, um, uh, shot back out into the main display and they'll go to town eating all my detritus, eating that phytoplankton up and reproducing. So, um, the next thing is definitely having a refugium that'll help. So if you plan on getting a mandarin, get you some phytoplankton, get you a mini refugium. It doesn't even have to be a big refugium. If you have an all-in-one tank, you can do one of these small refugiums that I have in this tank, and that's all you'll need. You don't have to have a separate sump, a big fancy system to have a refugium. 
It is very easy, it can be very cheap. So let me show you my refugium. So here it is, right here. It's just the caddy. Let's see if we can see some copepods. So there is some of my copepods in there. This is just a small inch, two inch square. And there's all those in there. Those are some of the bigger ones I have in here. I have tons of small ones in there. I mean, you can see life. That's sponge on the outside. I just need to scrape that off. But you can see a lot of them crawling around. I don't know if the phone's picking it up too well, but I can see a lot crawling around on the chato in there. So I just have chato in there. I don't know if they eat the sponge, but they seem to hang out a lot on the sponge. Um, so there they are right there. Um, like I said, that is just a small little spot. Um, at night, they come out a lot more. Um, and they, like I said, they flourish in this tank. So that's really all I have to say. So the secrets I have to keeping copepods might not be a secret, you might already know. But I didn't know when I was starting out, this was all new to me. I, I knew copepods were good for eating detritus, watching that BRS video. Um, but then once I started doing these things, I noticed, whoa, I have copepods everywhere. They are blowing up in here. It'd be awesome to get a mandarin one day, and maybe I'd be able to keep a mandarin in this 20 lagoon without having to dose them all the time, just doing the things I'm doing, because I have a ton of them in here right now. Um, so yeah, get you some phytoplankton, get your refugium, and get you some copepods in your tank. I love them. They help out on uh, the detritus. My fish eat them. Um, corals are doing great. Maybe the corals are eating them too. Um, highly, highly recommend having copepods in your tank. Thanks for watching. If you would, leave a like, subscribe, do all that. Um, if not, <laughs> you don't have to either. It's fine. Uh, thank you for watching. Until next time.